Greetings, I'm Anita from beingdesigns.com and I'm all about helping you by providing tools so you can create awesome digital scrapbook layouts using GIMP. In this video, I'll share with you how to use a digital scrapbook template for quick and easy layouts. This is a template from a recent layout I did in the 52 Digi Scrap Layouts in 52 Weeks. This is the end result from me creating a layout using the template. This is also the result of me using this template for my layout. Very different results, same template. Let's take a look at the template and see what we have here. So we have here a file. It's called template week 15B dot XCF has all the layers because it's native. It's the native format for GIMP. It has a background paper for the main page. It has a photo mat. The gray is a large photo mat. It also has the blue, see the blue layers? Those are photo mats for each of the photos. And the white rectangles are locations where you can put photos. In this layout, I didn't use the white rectangles. I used the large blue rectangles so that my photos would be larger. I did not use a photo mat for each of the individual photos. I simply use the large photo mat. While on this layout, I used the large photo mat and the photo mats behind each of the photos. I have already placed the three photos I'm going to use for this layout in my image. So let's go ahead and remove. I'm going to delete the layers that have the wording photo. I won't need those. And it, lots of layers tends to be a little overwhelming for me. So let me look at this is the photo. And it is the one that I'm going to put here on the upper right. So I'm going to place it in the layer palette just under the white square, the white rectangle where that photo is going to be placed. Then this one is the large photo and this one is the other one. So let's start from the top. It's helpful to make the white a little bit transparent so that we can see through it as we're choosing the size for our photo. Choose our layer, scale tool, and it is here. So let's drag, I'm going to drag it a little bit. Then I'm just going to grab the center so that I can have an idea, a visual idea of how tall I need my photo to be. I want the end result to be approximately just take in this little piece of the, the little boy and the fish. He's kind of staring at it. So you can see it's a little bit tall still. So let me make it a tad bit shorter. That looks very close right there. So you'll notice that I'm using the scale tool. Um, it is going from the center. It's keeping the aspect ratio. It's going around the center. I can grab the center place, the center. I can grab the center square and move it around on my layout. We're going to scale it to this size for now. Let's see how we're going to, how it looks. Now I can use my move tool to move the photo right here it's gonna i'm filling in i'm looking at my photo through the white rectangle and looking at it so i like the height here just a little space here the fish here 
I'm liking this layout. So what I'm going to do is make the white rectangle the active layer. I'm going to right click that, choose alpha to selection, and I'm going to move to the photo layer. Let's go over to select and invert that selection and push the delete key or you can do edit, delete, whatever choice you do to cut pieces away from your layer. Now you see that it's still the same size. The outline of this layer is still the same size as it was previously. Let's go to layer crop to content. Now it simply has just our photo. So I'm going to hide the white and there we have our photo all in place. Let's do the same thing for the next photo. First, let's reduce the opacity of the white rectangle and then we'll make the photo layer active. Use our scale tool if that works better. I can use that center square to pull it around and that looks really close. So let's go ahead and use that sizing and then use our move tool to pull it. So now I'm looking through the white opaque, the white rectangle and I'm looking around the perimeter thinking so how important is it for me to keep his feet in and I'm really thinking I'm going to leave it like this. Maybe I'm going to pull, leave a little bit of space above his head. So now let's return to the layer palette, make that layer active, the white rectangle. I'm going to alpha to selection that layer, move to the photo layer, invert my selection, and delete everything outside the white rectangle. When I do this, I do realize that part of my photo was off of my image size. So let's shrink the image a little bit. And I may, I can tell that uh, several, both photos, this one that we're looking at has a little bit of area outside our image and the next one does as well. So let's use my select my move tool. I'm going to move everything onto our image. I'm going to use the select and just draw select everything that is should be outside our image. Then I can select none and crop to content for just our little boy here. And then I can line him up in the white. Let's make it big again. And hide his white rectangle. So let's repeat our process here. Scale. Okay, I'm going to alpha to selection the white layer, make the photo layer active, invert, delete. <clears throat> I'm then going to grab the entire photo so that I can 
remove all of the extra pieces that we don't need layer crop to content there we go now I have all the pieces and it's just a rectangle so let's hide all of the rectangles and we have our photos on our blue template mats on our gray large mat and our yellow background layer so let's go to pull in the brown digital paper for the background layer let's reorder that to be above the yellow let's use this paper for our mat let's right click on the on the mat digital paper and we realize it does not have an alpha channel so let's add an alpha channel that gives the mat this layer that gives this layer the ability to have transparency what I did was I right clicked on the gray matte layer and chose alpha to selection I then went to the digital paper layer and I inverted the selection I'm going to now delete outside beyond the background mat and what I have left is the mat we're going to use this green paper for the photo mats so let's pull that in now and since all three of the mats are going to be out of the same paper we could put them all on the same layer so I'm going to go to the blue mat pull it reorder it on the layer palette and reorder the larger one now I'm going to start with the right click merge down right click merge down now I have all three of the blue photo mats on the same layer right click alpha to selection go to my green digital paper right click add alpha channel select invert now we'll delete everything away except for what we had selected hide the blue and the green appears we now have the photos photo mat large mat and the back digital paper this is our end result here all I did was add dimension around the edges of the paper, dimension on the mat, dimension on the photo mats, and inked the edges of the photos. I added a title, little collage over here to the left, and I have an end result using a template, using the same template I used for this layout as well. Information regarding the digital kit that I used for the fishing trip layout I'll provide in the description box of the tutorial if you'd like to use this template or any of my others head over to www.beandesigns.com and check on the details on how to get the templates. I have templates for all of my 52 digi scrap layouts and 52 weeks available there. Hope you enjoyed this video, this tutorial on how to use a template. Check out the others here on my YouTube channel and subscribe as there will be more to come, more videos to come as I choose to preserve memories for future generations and like for you to do the same. Bye-bye for now.